Welcome back to my designs. I'm James, and today we're going to be looking at the Z axes of my milling machine. So let's jump straight into it and get started. Right, so I am going to start off by talking about why are we here today. So the, my previous video has been me working on making a tube roll bender, uh, whatever you want to call it. And to do that uh, off camera, I've been making these shafts, which consist of a keyway uh, being formed in and making a hexagonal uh, end drive end for me to use a socket bar onto. Now, Ignore this bit for now, but previously this had this kind of setup, which is quite familiar of these Chinese round column mill uh, milling machines. These are just a, a scale uh, that I'm sure has worked for many, many, many of you. But for me, it's I'm not really getting on with it that well. So with these machines, these are, I think the more class is a mill drill. So mainly a drill, but with a bit of milling with an X and Y axis table on here. Now, the Z-axis consists of a round, uh, a, round uh, a spindle that lives inside, and to actually uh, clamp this down, it's got two kind of like clamshells that clamp this on. Now, you're only ever going to be, you know, machining really, really light cuts onto here, and it's only, it, it, it's a Mickey Mouse milling machine, you know, let's, let's be right here. The problem that I've been, been getting, a lot of vibration, and this is probably a 20, 25 year old machine now, is that when you're clamping this down and it's engaged into the fine feed, is there's a lot of play within this wheel and it's creating kind of a few misdirections onto the actual um, the Z height of your, of your key weighed cut. So with this, when I've done it and I've struggled through and I was having a little bit of an uncontrollable variation in the actual depth of cut that I was getting, not massively and, and you know, not kind of massively to, to scrap the job or anything like that, but it was a bit of a pain and it's something that I've been doing for a while. So let's move straight into it and a little bit closer so you can see my problem and where it got a little worse. Now, I'd first off like to say that I have... Uh, I don't buy things without doing quite a bit of research and, and looking into things. And I have seen many, many people use these digital calipers um, very effectively. And, and it's, you know, it has genuinely worked really well for those guys. And, and hats off to you. But going back just a little bit of a, a step, this is what was installed here previously. And again, I wanted something that was a little bit more easy to use, quick, and I could reset this, you know, as soon as it's moving and it's going to be able to move very, very easily with the machine. Uh, hence why this is, uh, this is why we're here now. So um, I went, did a lot of YouTube videos and watched a lot of things and people were, were buying these and I've cut off one of the fins here. And I've installed this just steel piece and I started just this is me testing and seeing where things wants to go I'm just clamping everything up making sure that it actually works and it does and there's a few drawbacks and I had a few problems along the way which I'm sure there's there must be another me out there that's done this gone down this route looked at all the videos and it looks great and in practice whether it be a uh, an issue with my skill or whatever I don't know but I've had a bit of a nightmare doing this. Uh, one was actually drilling through these fins because they are uh, stainless hardened. And um, this part of the calipers here drilled through fine and I cut this with a Dremel tool. I then needed to drill this section at the bottom here. I could not drill this and then try to anneal it. And that made things even worse. I started melting things and I had a headache and it just, it went really badly. However, it does arguably work. It's not quite, it does arguably work. So then I started messing around with 3D printed things and I got things, you know, looking quite pretty and nice and I had to trim down the other different pieces. And at the end of it, I've got, you know, a milling machine that's not granted worth a lot of money, but it's something that I, I'm quite proud of that I own. Um, and I've got something that looks a little bit, well, it looks like that. So... I put this on Instagram, I had a bit of a moan on it, and I'm not really pleased with what I've done. I've seen other people do it, and I still think it looks like just some cheap calipers that you've kind of bubble gummed onto a milling machine. Now, that's just my opinion. You know, this is just what I've done, and I'm sharing it with you, the reasons why and why I think that I think I've gone for a better option. So, 
taking all this off uh, after having a bit of a nightmare I've melted this I couldn't drill through that I went through three drill bits and it was on a high speed drilling machine I just wasn't having much joy so the very very kind and lovely people over at the Allendale group machine DRO those type of people uh, so that group of people have very kindly sent me uh, one of these which is their linear scales so let's reposition and take a little bit more of a closer look okay so let's just uh, some people care about this i'm a bit nerdy with this type of thing but i quite like the um you know to compare the weights of things now granted this is missing a little piece i'm sorry i can't find it but just to give you a rough indication there is 139 grams a what i'd class as a bit more of a, a better standard definitely a bit better standard it's the emitter toyo which is 160 159 and then this which is 278 grams and you know just comparing these there's such a nice quality compared to that and that whether it be weight or whatever or if that's a bad thing i'm sure it isn't but it's these are surprisingly really nice now i do have some other emshaw stuff i've got a height gauge from them and that's exactly to the same quality and I believe it's Machine DRO's own brand, um, but it's a UK based company. Uh, really, really high quality and good, decent people to work with. I've bought things off them previously and I've actually got a, um, a kit to go on the Myford lathe. I just haven't done it yet. So let's take a bit more of a closer look. And I had a bit of a, well, I almost made a problem when I was ordering this. So let's look at that. So if you are looking at doing this and buying these, uh, these are measured on the actual size uh, of the, you know, what you can measure. So these are 150 millimeters, uh, maximum capacity of what you can obviously measure too. Now, these, I would have thought at the time, I was, I'm sure nobody else would do this, but because I'm a bit of a Muppet, is I nearly ordered the 150 mil ones the same as this because i know that these fit and i think that that would be the same but it, it's not the case so these are this is the four inch version or the 100 millimeter travel version and the actual overall length of these is 240 mil so to get this onto here uh again you can cut these down i believe but you've got to be super careful not to not to balls it up but luckily if you have got one like this you want the 100 millimeter uh, range one. So I'm going to kind of stick to what I've been using and been farting around with. And I just kind of want everything that I can line this up to be as flat and to get as much straight lateral movement as possible. I'm not going to go through uh, me drilling out this little bar here and farting and messing around with it. But you've got some location pins at the back, uh, which are here, here, here or up here. I'm going to go on this lower length here. And I'm not actually going to use this because I've got nowhere to securely put this up. Up here, um, if you can see, it's just some tin. And I'm going to just use this bottom piece here and onto here. And that's going to be solid enough. Now, the only downside I would say to this is kind of more down to me, is the screws that these come with uh, to actually uh, screw into the back of, of this scale here. There isn't any um it doesn't come with any however i'm not using this top section here so just off camera what i have done is i have removed the top section here and i'm going to be using the screws out of this lovely little bracket here uh, and to then screw into the back here to secure this into its fixed position now, obviously that's leave, uh, leaving a bit of a cap on here and this could fall off, but off camera, I've just made a small Anchor Designs little cap onto here. And if anybody wants this, um, just send me a message and I'll send it over to you. Uh, but this then just is gonna tidy everything up and it's a little custom and it's quite pretty. Again, if you want that, just send me a message. I'll send it over to you and you can print it on your very own 3D printer. Ugh. So I 
need M3 and five, four. Oh, for f yes. Okay, and there we have it. So I wanted it not to cover this uh, because, you know, I wanted it still to be able to really, really easily play around with the clamp and tighten that down, not to bang anything. Obviously, still get to the on and off switches and not to drill into these. So we've made this bracket, made this bracket on the back of here. And I haven't painted this because uh, I've actually bought one of those really cheap powder coating gun setups. Uh, well, I haven't. Uh, I'm on a waiting list for them. So I'm waiting for those to get back in stock. And then these will be quite a nice little brackets to actually powder coat so it matches uh, these and you know the black parts of the milling machine. So does it kind of work? It does, uh, which is good. Just enough clearance on there. Measured all this cap up to make sure that it would actually work okay. And it does, and it doesn't hit anything up here. But that is much much tidier and I can still get to everything I, you know I can still tighten down spanners um, and the collet trucks and things and it goes back to zero I'm really happy with that that is absolutely fantastic so um, yeah really recommend that I feel uh, you know a lot better than the crappy little caliper on here and again I know some people have made these uh, you know the calipers work but this is nice I'm not tweaking my head to try and you know see this and it's nice and solid it's quite clearly quite repeatable the quill is a bit I think it's more me <laughs> but that is that's going to make my life just a little bit easier now and you know taking the skill out of it which for me a weekend warrior that's great I'm really really pleased with that that is a fantastic bit of kit and no doubt I'll be fitting more of these to upcoming machines. So let's summarize. So I am really pleased with that. I wish I had this when I was just doing my keyways, but it's, uh, it's, it's always the case, isn't it? So um, summarize, really happy with it. It was really easy, even like a Muppet like me can do it. Again, I'm gonna be tidy, uh, tidying up the brackets and making it look nice and pretty, but that is super duper nice uh, I'm not having to plug things in and you know the batteries are meant to last for ages it's not the annoying little vernier uh, caliper ones that you get that are crap it's the nice big ones that you have in your welding helmets and key fobs I'm pleased and you know it's a UK based company and they're nice and easy to deal with if something goes wrong or it's broken I'm sure I could just send it back to them and they'd very kind of replace it to they and you know, for how much these are going for now, it's worth the investment in my opinion. So uh, I've got one on my Big Meddings pillar drill and I think that'll be a really nice addition on there as well. And um, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So if you did like the video, please uh, hit like and subscribe if you wanna see some more Dolly Mix type content. And uh, yeah, stay safe, all that, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.